welcome to Ivaskula in Finland for the second half of the FIA World Rally Championship 2007. Finland, the fastest and arguably the most spectacular event in the World Rally Championships. Since 2000, uh, since 1951, the Rally of Finland has been one of the greatest tests for man and machine. Only three times in its entire history has a non-Scandinavian won it, and by far the most majority of victories on this event have been, unsurprisingly, by Finnish drivers, including current World Rally Championship points leader Marcus Grunholm. With six wins in seven years to his credit, he is the favourite as we start the second half of the 2007 season. We get things underway here at the Super Special. The very first test, Kileri, just a fraction over two kilometers. Cars racing side by side against each other as well as against the clock. And as in this morning's uh, preview stage, it's overcast and cool. 15 degrees Celsius in Ivaskula. Hello, everybody. I'm Martin Haven. Welcome to Eurosport 2's live coverage of the Open of the Finnish Grand Prix. Marcus Granholm, our world championship leader at the halfway stage by nine points from Sebastian Loeb, looks favorite to continue his recent run of success with wins back to back in Italy and Greece. And Ford, who currently lead the manufacturer's table from Citroen, are also debuting the brand new 2007 spec WRC here this weekend. And, of course, you'll be able to catch up with all the action throughout the weekend on Eurosport. And it's a big weekend for rallying, as well as the World Rally Championship in action here. You can see huge amounts of Estonian flags waving for Ormo Ava in the Junior World Rally Championship. There's also the Intercontinental Rally Challenge, the Rally Madeira. And you'll be able to catch up with the action live from the service park there tomorrow, Friday and on Saturday. World Rally Championship highlights Friday night, Saturday night and Sunday night at 11.30 British Summer, midnight 30 Central European and of course there will be a preview program later this evening, 11 British Summertime, midnight, all of those on Eurosport International and British Eurosport. So don't forget, plenty of coverage, and if you miss some of the weekend stages, you can catch up with the full magazine program during the course of next week. Well, for those of you who have never witnessed a super special in the flesh, this is where the uh, hairs on the back of your neck start to stand up, the spines start tingling, and the crowd really start to get themselves revved up. They've already seen the course cars going around, and they know this stage of old. It's entertaining, it's spectacular, and most importantly, of course, it pits the drivers against each other visibly over a two-lap of this Mobius strip of a stage. Well, here are the uh, starting drivers, the first group that go through. And uh, opening the road will be Gareth Jones and Yuka Kitab. In the middle of the field, of course, we will see our top two in the championship head-to-head, -head, Marcus Gronholm and Sebastian Loeb, and uh, they have been seeded so that uh, we will see the relevant championship runners rallying against each other. So we're getting ready to uh, see the start now. There is the Skoda Octavia WRC of Yuka Ketumeki with Kai Riesberg alongside him. Riesberg, his co-driver, and in the other lane, will be the Ford Focus WRC 04 of Gareth Jones with co-driver James O'Brien. So the deal here is that they start side by side and will end side by side but on the opposite side of the track. So Jones to the right, as you see it, is starting on the uh, furthest side from the crowd. He will end up on the closest side to the crowd because...
two tracks uh, do not run exactly parallel. Well, good start from Gareth Jones, but uh, Yuka Kejimeki has stalled it on the line. So let's watch Jones then. Now the inside track splits off left here. The outside track goes further around to our right. And as Jones drifts across the sand, which has been so far unused by the rally cars, he then swings under the crossover bridge, which the outside lane car of Ketameki should be using over the two little jumps. And the two of them run parallel now around the long, sweeping 180-degree corner at the end. This is, in fact, a trotting track, not a horse racing, a horse trotting track, which is used for uh, carriage racing with the horses trotting as opposed to galloping. And so it's got two big, long, sweeping corners. The little jumps they're put in. So Ketameki has either started or been pushed off the start line. And this is the outside loop then. So Jones now running where Ketameki uh, either has or should have gone on lap. You can see the clock running now. These guys, of course, in WRC spec cars, but not the latest, and of course not full factory drivers, so they are unlikely to be as quick as everybody that will follow them, but we will at least get some indication of how the times run. So we should have had a split time at the end of the first lap. There it is, 1.27 for Jones. And Ketameki, as you can see, is coming up behind. 6.6 .6 seconds slower. And that's all because of that poor start. So as Jones continues again for the second lap on the inside, as uh, he goes through, comes off to the uh, pull-off point. And his time, 1.27.0, which makes that uh, 1.33.6 for Ketameki. And as... Uh, so is the case you generally don't win the event on the super specials but you can give yourself a bit more work to do and Ketameki once he did get going getting some superb drifts going on this deep sandy surface and of course it's been built to withstand uh, horses hooves rather than uh, 350 horsepower of world rally car with four-wheel drive and we'll have to see exactly how well it stands up it's been pretty wet through most of Scandinavia for the summer, just as it has in the UK. So we'll have to see how they fare. So at the moment, Gareth Jones is the uh, fastest in the event, the fastest of two cars that have yet, uh, that have so far gone. So from Norway, uh, we see uh, Mats Ostberg with Ole Christian Unnerud, his co-driver, and alongside them, and Jess Mikkelsen with Ola Flona in a 05 spec Focus WRC. I was rather hoping we might actually get some uh, countdown to the start, but not to worry. Mickelson in the Subaru, I uh, beg your pardon, in the Focus, uh, furthest from us. So uh, Mads Ostberg, these two Norwegian crews. And the distance should be pretty much equal by the time uh, they get to the line at the end of the first lap. But the crossover is definitely not. It's a shorter, although slower route to the crossover, perhaps, on the inside track. Not this long, fast drift that uh, the outside lane has. So across the line first goes Mickelson. 42-2 the split. And as you can see there, Mickelson goes through a little uh, left-right jink and then into this long, sweeping turn, which is a mirror, of course, of the one at the end of the rally, or at the end of the stage. Under the bridge goes Ostberg. And Mickelson comes down behind, but he's got the inside route around the final corner. And let's see if he can manage to pull back the ground. Is the Subaru going to take it at the line? It is by about a second. So Usberg 123.6, and that's four seconds nearly, uh, well, about three seconds nearly, just a fraction over, quicker than Jones before him. So little leaderboard at the moment shows that uh, Mads Usberg is our current leader, despite, as you can see, already giving the service crew something to worry about here on the very first Super Special.
Of course, the proper stages don't start until morning. But Usberg winning our second run here. Third pair of cars on the line here. Kai Kusalista is in his Mitsubishi Lancer. This is Khalid Amkasimi with Nikki Beach alongside him. The uh, Emirates driver started in uh, Land Rover Discoveries in the deserts of uh, the Emirates. And the first proper rally championship season was in 2002 in the Middle East Series. He won Group N and uh, has won the UAE title a couple of times. He jumps into this Ford Focus WRC for the second half of the season. Away he goes. He'll compete in Finland, Germany, Spain and Ireland. And uh, next year will be as part of a 10-round program. Now, there's a different livery to the factory Fords uh, this season, uh, the second half of the season, because they have got uh, the Abu Dhabi sponsorship aboard so it's now going to be renamed the Abu Dhabi Ford World Rally Team in fact technically speaking BP Ford Abu Dhabi World Rally Team so Akasimi with a pretty handy piece of machinery the 06 spec car which so far in the hands of Marcus Gronholm has claimed three wins three second places and a third uh, and a fourth in this year's championship but Al Kasimi playing himself in gently. This is his first appearance on the World Rally Championship stage at this level. He's done a few production World Championship events last year and made his debut in the PWRC in 2005. But this is his first taste of full World Rally, World Rally action. Kustela, meanwhile, making a very good stab at this. These are the, exactly the sort of conditions that a young Finn should relish. 125.3, just a shade slower than Osberg. But the Finns in the Mitsubishi Lancer taking uh, that particular scalp. Quicker than Khalid al Kasimi. Well, there is the driver from the Emirates. And one of the things, particularly this choice of venue, the trotting track does give, is gives the drivers, uh, particularly in the final long corner, a real chance to set up a nice drift in their car. And the crowd really appreciates somebody who can combine speed and uh, a degree of flamboyance as well. So moving on then to our fourth pair, and uh, there is, as I said earlier, a huge support in the crowd from the uh, Latvians, uh, from the Estonians rather, for uh, Guy w uh, for Umahava, and uh, his co-drive Kulda Sik, alongside him from Great Britain, Guy Wilkes and Phil Pugh, his co-driver. And they're in a 05 spec Ford Focus WRC Mitsubishi Lancer for Umoava. Both of the guys former Junior World Rally Championship contenders. And uh, the Estonians have got a pretty decent record here in recent years. Marco Martin winning for Ford in uh, 2003, becoming only the third ever non-Scandinavian to win this event. The first was Carlos Sainz back in 1990. Two years later, Didier Oriol did the trick and then had to wait another 11 years before the next non-Scandinavian win, which was Marco Martin. And so far, those are the only three drivers since 1951 who have not come from, well, predominantly Finland and Sweden, but from Scandinavia. Incidentally, of all the superstars that have won this event. Hanu Mikula has the most wins, seven to his name.
Marco Len, six times a winner over a span of 12 years with Fiat and Lancia. Marcus Grunholm has won the last three, beaten by Marco Martin in 2003, but he'd won the three before that as well. So following history, three misses out, three. It's might not be a good year for Marcus Grunholm, but we'll have to get that in a while. Guy Wilkes at the moment, pouring on the power on the inside track. Both very spectacular final corners. 123-2 quick as well. They are the quickest two. One twenty three two, one twenty three five. That leaves Guy Wilkes as our current leader, Umoava as our second fastest man, and Mads Osberg third quickest at the moment. So not much to choose between those two, and you sense that uh, if they make it to the end of the event in one piece, they are very likely to be fairly close together as well. Nice shot of the Estonian showing his paces. Look at that. Absolute perfect balance there. Barely a touch on the steering wheel. And Wilkes takes the uh, jump nicely. Again, great power sliding from these guys. Huge crowd here, just outside the town of Avaskala for the start of the Rally of Finland. Now, Christian Solberg from Finland with Risto Peter Leinen alongside him in the Mitsubishi Lancer. And beside them, Savi Pons. Now, uh, Savi Pons, the young Spaniard, making his Subaru debut. First WRC car was a privately run Peugeot 206. He's had uh, a couple of interrupted seasons. So far this year, he's been out in the Monte, Sweden and Norway in a Lancer. But for the second half of the season, he has been picked up by the Subaru World Rally team. So it'll be very interesting indeed to see how the young Spaniard fares. Well, this is really going to be a big break for Savi Pons. He's also competed in the Junior and Production World Rally Championship, essentially driving whatever he can, wherever he can. At the moment, Solberg, with the shorter first lap, is two seconds ahead. And of course, Pons has done testing with the team, but this is his first event, so obviously one thing he does not want to do is wreck the car here through some over-exuberance, and he'd like to play himself in gently, I think. Gets ahead through the crossover now this is going to be interesting he's got a slight lead coming into the long final corner Solberg with a shorter line and this might be very quick indeed and also very close Solberg's got it but he's got to take a tighter line can Pons come back at him we're going to have a fastest time we are 122.9 and 123.1 that's good stuff So the uh, competitors getting quicker and quicker. And the announcer here at the trotting track at Killary whipping the crowd up into paroxysms of ecstasy. Pons the quickest then. And uh, Solberg just a whisker slower. Great form from Savi Pons, and that's important, really, to get under his belt. All right, they had uh, the little preview stage, but uh, that's really not that entertaining for them, not that uh, important for them. Important not to wreck the car, of course, but uh, Pons, after the shakedown, feeling uh, pretty enthusiastic about this big break for him. They completed three days of testing before Rally Finland, and that seems to have paid off. Now then, uh, more Scandinavian interest, of course, from the Finns here. Joa Henninen with Mika Markalu alongside him, and from Great Britain, Matthew Wilson, of course, in the Stobart VK Ford, son of Malcolm Wilson, who runs the factory Ford outfit. And alongside him, uh, Michael Orr, so his Irish co-driver. These
pair the uh, young future perhaps of uh, British rallying and let's see what he can produce here So as they split, Hedinen goes along around the uh, long sweeping outside bend. And Wilson finds himself already in what is uh, starting to be quite a cut up section of track there. First of the crossover, as we've seen, he has the shorter, if slightly slower run. Hedinen jumps the bridge. He's got the inside track on the first lap. And because the two laps uh, are uh, pretty much or end up being identical it doesn't matter whether you start inside or outside in terms of distance but it does seem often that drivers prefer to have uh, one track or the other at the start well Wilson just a whisker quicker let's see what he can produce here started his competition career in fact motor racing in a in the series in the UK called T Cars, which is for uh, drivers under the age of 17 who've never raced before and uh, are too young to hold a road license. But then very quickly got his teeth into rallying, which was always where he wanted to go. Dad Malcolm has got a five year plan for his son to see if he can produce a world champion. Well, Henninen at the line, 122.8, and Wilson, 125.3. Uh, And that makes Henninen fastest so far. So Juha Henninen, he is our current leader in the Mitsubishi. So Juha Henninen leads at the moment. We've got plenty more action coming up live from Neste Rally Finland. Stay with us. Back at the trotting track at Caleri, stage one, the super special kicks rally finland off for 2007 and on the right hand side of your picture in the skoda jan capecci from the czech republic and closest to the camera federico villagra the argentine in the munchies ford world rally team focus well, we're now getting into uh, the seriously seeded drivers and the fabia wrc first under the bridge Jan Capecci made his World Rally debut in Rally Deutschland in 2002. And of course, that's the next event to which the competitors head here after Rally Finland. And made 19 World Rally starts. So this marks uh, something of an anniversary for him. His 20th, that's a nice landmark. And with a slight advantage, let's see if he can hold on. Uh, Federico Villagra. Thirty-five year old Argentine in the Munchies World Rally team. Started in motocross, in fact, Villagra. And uh, an early convert to rallying back in 1997, when he was just 21 years old, started competing in uh, rallies in Argentina. Not uh, going to trouble the event leaders, perhaps, but Capecci uh, gets himself into the top eight, and uh, Villagra not too far away either. As you can see, very short stage indeed for these cars, despite uh, the twisty nature of the centre section. Quite a lot of it is fast and fluid. Good jump from the Skoda driver. And again, the Argentine uh, winning that particular encounter. So now then, Henning Solberg, the uh, older of the two Solberg brothers in the event. And of course, Henning, multiple Norwegian rally champion has competed on this uh, event many times as well. You can't rally in Scandinavia without wanting to do the Thousand Lakes. Luis Perez Compag from Argentina. Uh, he's the second of the uh, Munchies. 
focuses. Rallied in the Stobart team last year alongside Matt Wilson. And uh, he's got a, an extremely experienced co-driver alongside him. Now let's see uh, what they can do. These two uh, fairly similar in age, both born uh, in early January, 72 for Compaq, 73 for Henning Solberg. Only one of them's got a World Rally Championship winning brother. Hands up, anybody who knows the answer. So the second of the Stobart Ford team focuses. Both these cars, 0.6 spec, so the current specification car, as used by the factory team right up until this event. And we will soon see the debut of the brand new 0.7 car, which uh, will be in the hands of the factory Ford drivers. So Compaq and Solberg should be fairly closely matched here. Solberg perhaps with more experience, well certainly with more experience of the event, but more World Rally experience per se. And the conditions should really play into his hands here. It's not going to be too far away at the line though. 122.7 is a good time from Henning Solberg. And 10th fastest for Luis Perez Compaq. 124 exactly. So Solberg moves into the lead of the event. But of course we are moving further up the list of seeded drivers as we continue through. And the Finns responding well to having a Norwegian ahead. See from the temperatures, part of the radiators blocked off on the affords. Trying to make sure that they don't get uh, too far out of their operating areas. Car at the line of Australian Chris Atkinson with the Belgian co-driver Stefan Prevo alongside him. And this is the Ford of Yari Mati Latvala who will be uh, fairly well known to regular British rally fans. Mika Antila alongside him. There's Yerry Matty. And uh, another of the uh, Stobart VK Fords, run by uh, Malcolm Wilson's M Sport operation. The Finn just 20 years old, competed on this first rally four years ago. He's competed in the uh, British and Finnish Championships, Production World Rally, Junior World Rally, and steps up to the uh, full house focus in 2007. Well, Chris Atkinson, of course, as the young Subaru driver, exploded onto the scene in more ways than one back in 2005, and is still really struggling to find complete front-running form. Well, perhaps putting uh, the ultra-experienced Stefan Prevo alongside has helped things calm down. Atkinson currently uh, seventh in the championship, but yet to visit the podium this season. Looks like Latvala with uh, little advantage here. Well, Atkinson may not be entirely uh, to blame for his lack of podium success this year. After all, his uh, teammate, Peter Solberg, has only finished in the top three twice. And uh, the Subaru has been a little bit of a struggle so far this season for them. Now, Atkinson looks as though he might have the advantage. Latvala getting the drift on early. They happen to have two or three bites of the cherry, and Atkinson, I think, is going to take this one. He is. So, first blood to him. 120.6, lead of the event as well for the Aussie. 121.7 puts Latvala in second place. Exactly a second clear of uh, former leader Henning Solberg. And you can see a few spots of water on the camera lens. So uh, the uh, cool and damp conditions look as though they may produce a little bit of rain 
later on this evening. That's certainly going to make tomorrow's uh, day in the stages uh, very entertaining indeed for the fans, if not for the drivers, particularly hard work. I would have thought of it's going to be wet as well as as blindingly quick and littered with jumps as it normally is. And that is the way that a rally car needs to be flying. A great attitude there and uh, took the landing particularly well. So Chris Atkinson moves into the lead of the event for Subaru. So, super special completed. Now all he's got to do is survive the next three days. Two Citroens now then. Danny Sordo with his Spanish co-driver, Mark Marti. And, of course, Sordo inheriting Mark Marti when Carlos Sainz retired. Sainz, who is Danny Sordo's mentor. And alongside him in the OMV Kronos Citroen, Manfred Stoll with his co-driver, Ilka Minor. And she is, uh, of course, uh, continuing a thread of top flight female co-drivers there aren't many but uh, those there are in the championship tend to be extremely good harry vatnan of course for many years uh, coaching by fabrizio pons in world rally championship events although he did win here with dave richards the subaru team boss pro drive boss uh, and here's his co-driver when harry won his to date one only i oh, know two one of his two uh, Rally Finland wins. In fact, I think he was co-driven by Dave Richards in, but I oh know uh, Fred Henderson in the other, uh, Fred Henderson, Fred Gallagher in the other one. So, uh, getting back to the plot slightly, let's see which of the two Citroens comes out on top here: the uh, Total Citroen factory car or the OMV Kronos car. Of course, last year Kronos running the Citroen works contracted drivers as the team were having a bit of a hiatus stole 1.6 ahead at the split and that's interesting Sordo might struggle a little to bring that back in still looking very aggressive and he was promising to be 100% from the first kilometer well he's already had the first kilometer and he's lived up to that let's see if he can hang on to this lead it's going to be close but uh, a fancy again Sordo might just be able to hold on let's see what Manfred Stoll can do son of a rallying father Siggy stole more of the endurance rally type man than uh, too many World Rally Championship wins. Danny Sordo takes that one. 121.2, so slower than Latvala, uh, ahead of Latvala, but slower than Atkinson. And uh, that moves him into second with Stoll in third. A big pun in uh, fourth. Okay. Obviously, my arithmetic, not what it should do. Uh, well, not what it should be. Atkinson, though, still leading from the uh, two Citroen drivers. Sordo in second. So uh, if they have a few more stages around the trotting track, as they do, maybe Chris Atkinson will start to get to like this place. Cars on the line now of Mikko Hirvonen, the brand new factory Ford Focus RS WRC 07 in the BP Ford Abu Dhabi World Rally team. I think we may have ticked all the sponsors' boxes there. And Mikko Hirvonen uh, with Jarmo Leitonen alongside, of course, carrying a lot of finish hopes here. And with the Ford in such strong form in the first half of the season, uh, he may well be a good, solid podium hope. Peter Solberg alongside him, the Norwegian with uh, Phil Mills in the co-driver's seat in the Subaru Impreza WRC. Now, this could be an important grudge match here. Well, not so much of a grudge, but head-to-head. Uh, -head. Little response time showing here, but just a whisker quicker away from the lights than Solberg. Petter really needs to try and put the first half of the season firmly behind him. Accentuate the positive. Keep those two podiums in mind. Third in Greece, second in Portugal. And try and forget all the other bits and pieces that were sent to try him in the first seven rallies of the championship. First eight rallies of the championship. Incidentally, next year it has been announced 12 events 
not in the first half of the World Rally Championship, in the entire World Rally Championship. So where we are now going to get into that World Rally Championship sh sharing status between events, where events will cycle round being in and then out of the World Rally Championship. And for some, financially, that may end up proving to be very difficult indeed, particularly as they've not been given a huge amount of notice that it's going to happen. So watch this space. Now, this is very close indeed. Solberg with the inside line and with the speed. And I don't think Hirvonen's going to be able to come back at him. So Solberg will win this one. He needs to beat 120.6. He doesn't. 121.3 and 121.9. So Chris Atkinson in the Subaru is our current leader. 1 minute 20.6. Teammate Petter Solberg, 121.3. So Solberg wins that one, but Atkinson leaves from Danny Solberg, uh, Danny Sordo. Petter Solberg third. Latvala fourth, and uh, Henning Solberg still in the top eight as well. So Hervenen putting the first actual competition kilometers on the wheels of the 07 spec Ford Focus WRC. And as we move on from him, we get another one of them because here is our current World Rally Championship leader with Timo Ratiain and alongside him it is double World Rally Champion Marcus Grunholm, the 2000 and 2002 champion, 07 spec, brand new Ford Focus WRC. They're ready to go and alongside them of course is the reigning and triple World Rally Champion Sebastian Loeb with Daniel Elena sitting in the co-driver's seat of the uh, Citroen C4 WRC. And perhaps given what's happened in the last three years, we might have expected at the midway point Sebastian Loeb to be back in front of the championship, but that has not happened. Loeb with a string of successes, Mexico, Portugal and Argentina, back to back after Rally Monte Carlo, who won the opener, but then victory for Granholm in Sweden and again in Italy and Greece. And some good, solid, consistent podium finishes have given Grunholm a nine-point mid-season lead. And then, of course, we start the second half with Grunholm's home event. Rally Finland has fallen to the, Mar uh, to the Marcus Grunholm touch six times in the last seven years. And in fact, in the field, there is only one former winner of the Rally of Finland, and that is Marcus Grunholm. So he has had a remarkable dominance on this event over the last few years. Marco Martin, the 2003 winner, not competing. And Sebastian Loeb has never tasted success here. It's not impossible, but certainly you have to figure that unless there is problems, Marcus Grunholm may well be the man who leaves here on Sunday with the 10 points and Sebastian Loeb might do very well indeed to hang on in second place but look at the attack from Gronholm absolutely determined right from the first kilometre they shall not pass Grom Gronholm is going to the line Loeb's very close indeed and that's fantastic 120.8 and 120.9 but they do not lead the rally Chris Atkinson, 120.6, still leads Rally Finland 2007 after the first Super Special. Now then, that's very entertaining indeed. Atkinson putting down a fantastic performance here, especially when you consider who we've just seen. A double and a triple World Rally Champion at the peak of their powers, our top two in the World Rally Championship beaten by Atkinson in his Subaru. Are we going to see a change of fortunes here, or will normal service be resumed? in Finland as we have just seen the uh, local hero Marcus Grunholm beat Sebastian Loeb in a head-to-head -head. we now get into our 
Super 1600 uh, Junior Category Drivers. The Junior World Rally Championship is here in town. And uh, there you see the Suzuki Swift of Jan Mulder with Katrin Becker alongside. The Estonian with the German co-driver. And alongside Patrick Sand of Sweden is Emil Axelsson. And here's a Renault Clio. Now the Swift, a Super 1600 car, the uh, Clio with a two-litre motor. So this should be a fairly unbalanced uh, pairing. However, you take them as you get them. Of course, in the Junior World Rally Championship over the years, the uh, Suzuki's have been particularly effective. And uh, the Suzuki team, I'm sure, will be buoyed up by uh, team boss Monster Tajima and his recent win on the Pikes Peak, beating Rob Millen's, what was it, 11-year-old record uh, and the uh, Pikes Peak race to the clouds in uh, the most astonishing-looking uh, Pikes Peak weapon that Suzuki have produced recently, or uh, to date, perhaps. For the junior drivers season started in Norway they had round two in Portugal then went to Sardinia so it's the fourth round of the series and they will be in action again at uh, the end or well, the middle of the month in a fortnight's time in Rally Deutschland they don't travel to New Zealand they uh, finish off their season in a flurry in Catalonia and Corsica and after a long break since the Acropolis, production will rally action not until the end of the month in New Zealand. That's why there's a long break, because they're on the boat. As uh, so Sandell claims that one by how much? 2.9 seconds over Mulder. So uh, that's the advantage. The few hundred extra cc and the few extra horsepower give the two-litre driver. And uh, saluting the crowd, and why not? Chance to showboat before a big audience. The event is uh, always worth taking. And it's not easy to get a good, long, smooth slide going in these front-wheel drive cars, but he certainly made every effort, didn't he? Pitching it in, keeping it unbalanced nicely. And here's the Suzuki's attitude again, defaulting to understeer as much as it can, but being wrestled round there by Jan Mulder. So now another couple of uh, different French manufacturers. And here's Peugeot 206 WRC, Ricardo Trevino of Mexico with Borja Aguado of Spain sitting in the co-driver's seat on the far side there. And in a Super 1600 Renault Clio, Josip Beresh with Pedestari alongside him. Oh, good start. Very quick reactions, of course, uh, enhanced by the four-wheel drive of Trevino's 206. Car with which Marcus Gronholm won both his, not necessarily exactly this chassis, but both his World Rally Championship titles came in the Peugeot 206. We saw Umuava earlier on in action in his World Rally Championship class car. He currently lies second in the standings to uh, Pegona Andersson of Sweden. Uh, Jan Mulder, who we just saw, the Estonian, is third in the Junior World Rally Championship. And uh, Josip Beres, in the background there, is currently lying fourth. So, uh, important event for him. Patrick Sandel, we just saw, is six in the championship. He's got nine points, uh, same as Beresh. In fact, uh, with being second in uh, Norway, maybe Sandel ought to be not tied but actually in fourth ahead of Beresh. Anyway, uh, I'm not to uh, argue the vagaries of how the points are written down, but there is a knot of drivers following the top three, and this is certainly the event in which to try and break any deadlock. Well, the Mexican exploiting the four-wheel drive advantage, and I think some nice-looking drift going there as well. Playing nicely to the crowd, up towards the fence, and stops the clocks 127.4. One thirty-one seven for uh, Beres. So
So the driver from Slovakia with his Czech co-driver putting in uh, a decent enough performance. But uh, at the moment, Sandel, Patrick Sandel is the World Rally Championship leader uh, in the event with uh, Beresh in second and Mulder in third place. So Jan Mulder, who is the best placed so far of our Junior World Rally Championship competitors. Indeed, uh, the top two in the series, who have both, uh, well, Umoava's got a 10-point lead over Mulder, so he can't be passed, can be caught, but can't be passed. And uh, PG Anderson has a 14-point advantage over Mulder, so he can't be caught at all uh, on this event. And they both uh, are absent here. So again, Arm Burkhardt, another of the drivers on nine points, with four from Norway and five from Sardinia. And Burkhardt lining up against Martin Prokop of the Czech Republic, who is three points adrift of all the drivers we've just seen in the JWRC. And these uh, two Citroen C2 Super 1600 cars spiritual successor of course of the Saxo and Saxo kit car with which our current world rally champion Sebastian Loeb cut his early teeth in fact Loeb has never rallied for anyone other than Citroen and the C2 becoming a very popular car as well in uh, JWRC and Super 1600 circles and it's getting increasingly popular the uh, Super 1600 category as well Well, let's see how they split. Really pretty close, isn't it? Not much between these two at all at the end of the first lap. Half a second in favor of Burkhardt. And uh, one of the joys of these cars is, of course, their high and willing revving engines. Just happen to uh, thrash the nuts off them to make them work hard. Well, Super 1600 and Super 2000 may well yet be the way that world rallying heads. WRC cars, of course, a uh, lot of technology and pretty expensive as well. And with the rally championship contracting, maybe it will be uh, a case of more and more of these Super 1600 and Super 2000 cars being developed. In fact, uh, the most recent was developed uh, was... Uh, made its first stage run on the 1st of August. That's the new MGZR Super 2000 car. And you thought they didn't make MGs anymore. Well, they do. It's been uh, prepared by MSD, Motorsport Developments in the UK, who used to run Hyundai's rally team. And it should make its debut on Rally China. And of course, it's the Shanghai Automotive owners of the MG name that have brought the car back to production and the hope is that it will be a popular customer car. In fact, uh, Nanjing Automotive, not uh, Shanghai Automotive, although the two seem to be moving closer in terms of uh, production base. So Dave Whitehead, the uh, boss of MSD, hoping that the uh, MG will pro provide a uh, successful and popular customer car, or will prove to be. Continuing with our Junior World Rally drivers, Cortevinoir here, uh, Cortinovis rather, the Italian, uh, again, like Prokop, six points so far in the season. In his uh, Renault Clio, and Conrad Rautenbach is uh, well, struggling at the moment. He has not scored points so far in the JWRC. So let's see what he can manage. David Senior alongside him. Senior, very experienced co-driver. And uh, has passengered many McRae's. Not sure if I'm right in saying he, that David Senior has sat alongside all rallying McRae's. But uh, <laughs> certainly seems to be uh, pretty popular with the family. A good set of hands on the notes. Confirmation this week as well that not only has uh, Colin McRae 
gone again to the States for the uh, X Games uh, alongside Travis Pastrana, but he will officially or has officially been entered for the 2008 Dakar as well in the uh, BMW X5 X Raid. So uh, that'll be entertaining as well. Conrad Rautenbach with a two second advantage over the Italian. if he can hold on to it. It's going to be pretty close, I think. Yeah, the Clio just makes it onto the track first, but Routenbach, of course, with the inside line. Let's see what he can make of the final flurry. It's going to be very close, but I think it's going to be Routenbach at the line. Oh, not by much. Oh, absolute dead heat. Excellent stuff. 131.6 for both men. Well, you don't often get that in the Super Special, but uh, there you go. They <laughs> produced a, a good show, the two of them, and a dead heat in terms of time as well. And that puts them joint second, I think, in the Junior World Rally standings. Good job indeed by uh, Conrad Routenbach. Quick out of the blocks. And Cortinovis, the Italian. Andrea Cortinovis, similarly, very good start to the event. Now then, uh, Latvia versus Finland here, close neighbors. And here are the Finnish pair, Kalipina Meki and Tumo Nikola alongside him. There in the Renault and in the Suzuki from Latvia, Vilius Rozakus and Andreas Shoshash. It's interesting Latvian name. Uh, doesn't seem to have quite the Latvian ring that uh, most of them do. Anyway, I'm uh, not going to question uh, the Latvianness of it at all. Away they go then. Pino in the uh, yellow Renault and Rozakus in the yellow Suzuki. Rosarino is more custody and the Suzuki is more Suzuki yellowy, isn't it? I suppose it is more of a uh, factory Renault yellow colour. So again, two uh, slightly misbalanced pairs, the Suzuki, the Super 1600, but the Clio is a Super 2000 two-litre car, or a two-litre car rather than Super 2000 spec necessarily. Piramaki, in fact, running in uh, the up to two litre Group A category, so he should have a comfortable advantage here in terms of performance. Whether he can exploit it or not remains to be seen, though. Rizoukas is certainly throwing a Suzuki around with great aplomb. Eighth place in Portugal. Didn't score, though, unfortunately, in Sardinia. The two events that uh, Rizoukas has done this year in the Junior World Rally Championship. If he can grab some more points here, then uh, that'll be uh, a decent result indeed. Not very far behind at all either, was he? Considering he was giving away uh, a decent power advantage. So that leaves him in uh, uh, ahead of Jan Mulder, at least in the uh, Junior World Rally Championship category. And Jan Mulder, don't forget, third in the points. And Jan Mulder is the leading Junior World Rally driver on the event. And of course, a teammate in the Suzuki lineup. Suzuki really have been huge supporters of the Junior World Rally Championship. Be interesting to see uh, if they continue that when they debut their World Rally car, whether they go for the full program. 
and plenty more Suzuki-ing to be going on with. Uh, Tapio Suminen and Yama Otman from Finland, both in the, the number 59 car, and alongside them from Estonia, Eka Pers and Ken Yaveo. I suppose that does stop the cars just sitting there, spinning their wheels. The uh, most elegant solutions, engineering-wise, are often the simplest, aren't they? So this should be a very evenly matched battle. Two drivers whose experience should give them a decent handle on these conditions. Pearson Suminen, pretty much should be identical here. Zoom in the yellow machine. For the inside line on the first lap. Pairs just a fraction ahead. Now, how will that work out? Interesting to see. Pairs 1.4 up. Well, that's actually a uh, bigger advantage than I thought there might be. See how Suman and Copes here. Pairs with over a second in hand on the first lap. Suman and first onto the track. Looks like he's got that back. Now, can Pairs take advantage of the shorter run to the flag to hold his first lap advantage? Or will it swing back the other way? Suman and's ahead. He's going to get to the line first. So. Pears has not made a, as good a job of the inside track as uh, Suminen made of the outside. So it goes from uh, 1.4 in favour of Pears to 2.2 in favour of Suminen. Getting into his stride on the second lap. Pears may be uh, made a little error. Got a fraction too close to the barriers and had to uh, get off the throttle and that's pretty much all it would take on such a short stage. So then uh, the first stage of Rally Finland, the Super Special, won by Chris Atkinson. Of course, the rest of the field still to go through, but it'd be very much of a surprise if anybody beat that time. Marcus Gronholm, Sebastian Loeb couldn't, so you don't expect too many of the other runners in 2007's Rally Finland field to be able to do that. So Chris Atkinson takes first blood, of course, for himself and for Subaru. And uh, if that is an indication of a return to form for the Subaru team, then that will be warmly received by the fans, and certainly not before time. Well, there you saw the uh, nose being uh, shunted on the bridge. Atkinson leading the event. Don't forget, you can see a full preview on Eurosport tonight at 11. That's midnight CET. Bye for now.